In today's video, we're going to learn about the basics of Flutter. That is, we'll try and make sense of the default code that is created when you create a project. In the first line, you see the import statement, Flutter slash material dot dot. You notice the word material there? That plays a very big role in Flutter. All the widgets present follow material design, the set of rules for components that Google has provided to make the overall app look great. The main function is the starting point of any application. In this case, the main function points to the class MyApp. MyApp is a class that extends stateless widgets. Here's how Flutter works. Everything is a widget, a button, a text, or a scaffold. Everything is a widget. In fact, a Flutter app consists of nothing but a tree of widgets. In this app, my app is the root of your application, which is also a widget. There are two kinds of widgets in Flutter. One is a stateless widget, which has no internal state. These are widgets that are not likely to change over time. Examples include text or an icon. The other is a stateful widget, a widget which can contain more than one state. Basically, any widget that a user can interact with is a stateful widget. Examples include checkbox, form, a slider, or a text field. The My App class overrides a method called build. The build method basically tells the application how the app is going to look like. That is, where the children widgets are present and how they look like. In the build method, we see it returning material app, which is again a widget. We see the properties of this widget inside, the title being Flutter Demo. To the theme data class, we pass the primary swatch or primary color and the home property, which points to another class, which is also a widget. My home page class extends a stateful widget, which means the user can interact with, with this widget and the widget can contain one or more states. Since it's a stateful widget, it overrides a method called create state, which points to yet another class called my home page state. The underscore before the class name means that this class is private and is only visible inside this library. This class extends state, which is of the type my home page. I understand that all this can be very confusing right now, but I'm sure that after watching the upcoming videos where we'll be building apps and getting our hands dirty, you will get the hang of it. So we create a method called increment counter, which takes care of this particular interaction. The only place where the user is interacting in this application is where one clicks the floating action button. This should increment the value in the text by one. So we create a method called increment counter, which takes care of this particular interaction. Notice that we call set state here. This tells a Flutter framework that something has changed. When we do this, Flutter calls the build method and this in turn updates all the widgets. Build method is overridden again. Here, we define the other widgets such as text and floating action button. You can see we return the scaffold class, which is also a widget. It's kind of like a blank canvas where you define all the other widgets. First, we define the app bar, which is basically the bar you see on top of your application. The next property is called body. Here, we define another widget called center. It basically centers all the other widgets present inside it. Since we want all the widgets, the text, the counter, and the floating action button to be in one line, we define a column. The column widget is given as a child property of center. Since we want all the children of the column class to be in one line, we call the main axis alignment and set it to center. Now we define the children of the column. The first is going to be a text which says the button has been pressed this many times. And the second is also going to be a text which shows the number of times the floating action button has been clicked. After we define the children of the column, we define the floating action button itself. The property on pressed calls the method increment counter that we had defined earlier. We also mentioned the icon that the floating action button is going to use in the child property. Now this was only the basic overview of the default code that was there. And still that was a lot to take in. So don't be overwhelmed. This is only the second tutorial. 